the Bulls versus the Bears. Get in the game. www.tackletrading.com Hello everybody, this is Noah Davidson wanting to catch up with you and talk to you a little bit about how to work through repair strategies. Um, let me start out by talking a little bit about what's going on with the broad market. Um, looking at the broad market S&P index, today is Wednesday, the 14th of January, and the market appears to be putting in a pretty solid head and shoulders pattern. So if you kind of look at what we see going on here, we've got a you know big, fat head and shoulders. Looks like it's violating the neckline, and you know we're watching to see if we're going to continue to get a breakdown. Um, as I look at the market and what is going on with the market, this obviously is going to force me to change some postures on some trades. And as I look down the portfolio and look at some of the you know income trades and some of the expense trades, I need to go to work on adjusting, exiting, and or repairing positions. Now I am going to start out with. GMCR, Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Uh, this is a stock position that I've actually done pretty well with and actually, you know, year to date have a pretty good profit on it. Um, let me go grab the chart real quick here and kind of walk you through the progression of the trade so you have an idea of where it's coming from. So now, um, GMCR was originally purchased clear back here, very end of October on the retracement here, where it broke out, retraced, was able to pick it up here at about 139 and change. I'll show you the exact price here in a moment. And rode that up, 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 up. And as it slowed down and had a really nice profit on it, what I, what I went and did is sold $140 in the money puts and grabbed more than the intrinsic value. So I actually ended up having a you know, really hefty premium. And then as, the, as it dropped, um, and came in and, and rallied out, that option expired out of the money, got to keep the stock, and owned the stock, had a really nifty profit on the position. But then as it started to break down again, what I did is I set and I added on another option. I sold an in-the-money 129 call option that's set to expire right now. So let me go ahead and, and jump back out here and show you that position. And let's walk through the analyzed tab here real quick. So own the stock at the price of $139.85. So I'm in the analyzed tab here, and I'm walking you through this on the, you know, done it on the virtual account. So if you look at this, own the stock price here at $139.85, and then sold the 130 call for January and collected $7.20. Now that's close to expiration. It expires this Friday and it is trading right down near the strike price. So if we wanted to go exit that trade right now, we have a nifty little profit, pretty close to 600 bucks. Not quite, but pretty darn close. So if you go look at the trade tab right now and look at that January option, you can see we can buy it back for about 120 some odd bucks. So if we go look at the monitor page, what you'll see here is the position, as we kind of break it down, you see where the delta, the gamma, the theta, the vega, and all those you know, numbers, kind of, you know, kind of the point of the protective call right or the covered call, is to neutralize the delta. And you have a plus 100 on the stock, and right now the, the delta is getting kind of weak. It's only negative 46. It's not providing a lot of coverage. It's neutralizing the position just about halfway. But with the market running down, I need better insurance. Now, these um, right now show close to a $600 profit, but it's showing that the stock position is down overall. Now, I'm still actually up on the position, and to do a full repair, I'm going to probably have to end up cost averaging to help bring that break-even point down. But, um, you know, with the option sold last year, the $140 strike, this trade's actually still up almost $3,000. So it's not a very stressful position to be in. But I want to walk you through how to do a repair strategy with the protective call right. And what we're going to do now is what we call rolling down and out. So we're going to roll down in strike price and out 
in time to find some more money. So let me walk you through that process so you kind of get a good picture of what that's going to look like. The first thing we need to do is exit the existing call. So I'm actually going to go ahead and exit this call. Now we have a close to a $600 profit on that. Let's see what we can exit that for. Let's just grab this and jot it down here real quick. Let's go with chalkboard real quick. Grab a whiteboard. <clears throat> so we're going to start out with those options were sold for $7. It was a credit of $7.20 is what we sold the January 130 calls. So now we're going to go pocket those and we're going to close that trade out. So I'm going to go ahead and create a closing order here. We're going to look to buy that back and we're going to try to get filled with the, the mid-price here. So buy it back for 125 and we'll go ahead and confirm and send and that will exit so boom we've closed that position out okay now what we're left with is a stock purchase price of 139.85 and in order to lower the break even point you can do what's called dollar cost averaging now i would only do this on a stock i want to actually defend and defending meaning one these guys pay a dividend two i like the company long term Three, I don't think it's dipping much below 120. I'm going to start out with 125 strikes, and I see the old support resistance at 120. So it's something that I think is defendable. And if we were to look at it on a longer term um, chart, let me go to GMCR here and go get a weekly time frame, I still think that this stock has a you know, reasonable um, uptrend scenario when I, I believe that 120 ish still becomes a pretty solid support zone ballpark where it could still kind of hold this trend zone. Now, that is if it breaks down, you know, at some point in time, I might have to give up on the position, but I can defend it right now. But it's going to take some cash. You have to throw some money at the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start out by buying a few more shares, and I'm going to figure it out how much I can do that for first. So I'm going to go add simulated trades. We're going to go buy... Uh, 200 shares of the stock and that alone is going to bring the break-even point down so let me kind of do this show you the break-even points here so current break-even point is up at the original purchase price now there is another option again that I've collected a big fat premium on that I'm not accounting for and we are going to bring that break-even point down just by adding stock price now kind of the way that this is going to go is just remember the six dollars we just collected so we sold the stock for 720 we got filled at 120 so we have six bucks in our pocket so that six dollar profit is we need to account for now imagine for a moment that we own the stock again still at 139.85 and if we subtract the $6 out of that, that really means we own it down at $133.85. But let's, let's look at what it would mean to us if we were to go sell some February options. This is what's called rolling down and out. So we just bought back the Januaries. And I could use the weeklies. I can use whatever. I'm going to go all the way out to the standard Februaries. And I'm going to start by selling the 125 calls. Now, the 125 calls, it looks like we'll be able to get... Um, let's go look at what we can split that bid ask spread for. Looks like we can get it for about 990. <clears throat> so 990. And just to make the math easy, I'm going to roll that up to 10 bucks and just talk about it from that perspective and I'll probably go ahead and take the 10 cents back off. So now, if we promised to buy the to deliver the stock, excuse me, at 125 and if you kind of look at this, this is going to take a little bit of math to kind of walk you through so you can understand this.
but it's really not that hard. So we again own the stock original purchase price at 195. Excuse me, 139.85. 139.85. So we have that at 139.85. And if we promise to deliver that stock at 125, we are going to lose some money. So we, you know, we own it at 139.85. If we promise to deliver that stock at the strike price of 125, we are going to lose approximately $14.85. Now keep in mind that we have collected plus $6. And we're going to collect another $10. So we're going to collect 10 bucks. So plus $10. So that means we actually have $16. So plus $16, and the in theory, all we're going to lose is $139.85 minus $125. We're going to lose $14.85. So that meaning being said, what that does is that puts us ahead of the game. So let me go ahead and kind of show you what that does and how that works out on your risk profile. The first thing we do is by purchasing the, the extra shares of the stock, that brings our break-even point down. So our original break-even points clear up here at 139. Cost averaging, and you have to figure out how many shares it's going to take, and it does take a little bit of money to pull this off, so you have to make sure you have the funds available to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in, and that brings the cost average down to 133. So I'm going to go ahead and set those price slices to the chart. And when we set the slices to the chart, we brought our break even point from clear up here at 139. We're bringing it all the way down to 133. Now, in adding the extra options on there, we now would own 300 shares. I'll be able to sell three of those calls. And we bring that in, and because of the difference in time frame right now, we're gonna have to look at that, that little risk graph. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and, and cost average that in. So let me go ahead and confirm and send. Well, let's go do that to make sure I'm getting the best price possible. Let's go ahead and create ticket. And pick it up. <clears throat> for the 129.68, confirm and send. Okay, so that just brought our cost average down. And we can now go, let's go with here, reset parameters and date. And if we go ahead and sell the three options, it's gonna put us into a um, covered call. So we now have 300 shares of the stock Let's bring that, sell the 125 call options. Let's go create a duplicate order. $10 limit, we're just asking for a little bit more. 300 shares, three contracts, we'll go ahead and confirm and send. See if we can get filled on that. Now in the meantime, <clears throat> What that really does is it brings our break-even point down. And uh, let's go set this calendar date out here. We've now rolled the trade out to February, so it doesn't expire till February. And we'll go set this here out to February, just so you can see what this trade would look like at expiration. So at expiration, you'll notice our risk graph actually brings it in. And we've lowered a break-even point all the way down to where we won't lose as long as the stock stays above 123. So above 123. So let me go set that slice to the chart. And we have brought the break even point down from the original price of 139.85. By buying the stock, we've lowered it down to 133. By selling the three in the money covered calls at 125 with the extra premium, we've brought the break even point down to just above 122 here. 
122 and change. So now all the stock has to do is stay above support. And if it goes back up, we can get called out. If it stagnates and the options decay, we can buy those options back and still own the stock. Earnings is coming up, but if I need to, what I'll do is buy the puts and have the you know downside protection. We've got a little bit of wiggle room with that. So that would turn it into a caller. So this protective call right, what we did is again, cost averaged. Step one, let me put it into some steps here for us. <clears throat> so we'll start out with what we were talking about here with step one was to buy back the original covered call. Covered call, CC covered call. Step two, in this case, was to cost average the stock. Cost average. Now, the only reason I did that was to compensate for some of the money that was missing due to, I actually didn't really stay on top of this trade that well. So cost average, um, <clears throat> buy more stock. If you are not underwater, you don't have to do this step. And then step three is to roll down And what that means is to a lower strike price. So lower strike. Step four is out. And that means in time. So we go to a later expiration date. So you know, roll out in time. Um, to later expiration date. And when it comes to the expiration date, I usually try to go six weeks or less. And what we're after is the extrinsic value, that extra premium, and the time and, and implied volatility value that you get in the option. And so it's through those steps that we're able to bring that cost average down. So now, as we look at that position, you can kind of come in and see that in selling those three covered calls, let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> we already got the order pending, so we got the set, you know, trying to cat, collect 10 bucks out of it. We might be being a little bit greedy on that. Um, the price has dropped a hair. So just for, um, you know, coverage sake, we'll go cancel and replace that and bring it down to the mid price just to get filled. And that actually just made a couple, little bit of a difference on that. So we now have that trade completely covered. And we go look at our analyze tab here, delete all of our simulated trades since we now have the initial position. <clears throat> and with everything we've collected, we've now got the position and I want you to notice our delta is still moderately bullish, but we own 300 shares of the stock. We sold three in the money calls, and so we have a negative 184, and that also gives us a positive theta, 28, so it's cash flowing. And you know our P&L from the open is not going to be truly representative because one, there's $600 now missing out of that. It's not really accounting for that. Now, just to show you the um, overall, I don't know if it's gonna show the account, let's go look at the <clears throat> profits and losses, and it's going to show us year to date, so it's not going to really be everything we've got there, but there overall, profit and loss year to date, we're pretty much break even at this point in time, which is kind of nice. That's not accounting for the $3,000 gain from last quarter. So again, this is Noah Davidson showing you some pretty cool adjustment strategies and repair strategies. That is, again, a protective call right. Um, rolled down and out in an adjustment so that we can defend the position on the stock that pays the dividend. And again, we have a long-term growth projection on. And I like, you know, I like GMCR long-term. And it's not often that I'll hold a stock position, but this could work on anything you want to own stock on. And owning stock and knowing how to do a dynamic covered call right strategy is one of the most incredibly conservative slash safe strategies 
where you can win when you win, and if you know how to do the protective call right, you can actually not lose and really defend the position. So hope this has been helpful. I will catch you in the next video. Isn't it time you got off the sidelines and tackled trading? Join our online community of active traders where we make it happen every day. Stocks options, futures and forex at www.tackletrading.com. Get in the game.